Hi, in this third video on the series on partitioning, we are going to cover a topic that I lightly touched on in the first video, and that is essentially to show you the difference between how data is segregated or moved around in the file system based on whether you've implemented partitioning or whether you've implemented uh, multiple file groups. Now, as far as multiple file groups go, they definitely have their advantages, and one of those advantages is the ability to do a piecemeal restore. And that piecemeal restore, the concept basically means that if you look at any database, you have typically two types of data. One set of data is the static read-only data, and the other is the, uh, the more dynamic data set that your most current data belongs to, the transactional data which constantly needs to be inserted, updated, and deleted. If you look at it in layman terms, it's basically the difference between relevant data versus archived data. And normally, for most databases, it doesn't make much of a difference. And the reason for that is because the size of the database is fairly small. So for small databases, it's not really a challenge to go ahead and implement uh, a disaster recovery scenario or a situation where uh, everything works as expected. However, on the other hand, when you're dealing with uh, a very large database or a database that is uh, spanning multiple gigabytes or even terabytes, the challenge becomes far more significant and that is mainly because when you are dealing with very large databases, the time taken to restore the database spans many hours in some cases. So when you get into that situation, it's always important to be able to bring the database online as quickly as possible. And with the piecemeal restore, essentially what you need to do is just implement or restore those file groups that are currently active or the read-write file groups along with the transaction log file and the MDF file. If these three components of the database are online, then you can bring your database in a running condition. And when you look at the significant volume of data for such databases that span many gigabytes or terabytes, you'll see that at least 50, maybe even 70 to 80 percent of the data is just the archive data that's not really serving the purpose of the website at the moment. Uh, a typical example would be when you look at a ticketing system for a, uh, uh, a railway station or an aeroplane where People need to be able to book tickets because that's where you generate your revenue. But people may not be s as interested to see uh, information about tickets that they booked last year because that's already done and over with. So because of that differentiation, you, your core pieces of data usually doesn't span many, many gigabytes. It'll probably be maybe about 5 to 10 gigabytes at most. And your historical or archive data could maybe be 100 gigabytes, which you don't need to restore in order to get the database back online. So having said that, uh, let's look at another difference that uh, we're looking at with uh, the difference between uh, partition and file groups. And that's in the partition, the data gets segregated based on the value that's being inserted. So for this particular database, I'm actually running a script right now, which is inserting a couple of thousand rows into the database. And uh, let's look at the location of these files. Yeah. So it's in C colon program files uh, SQL Server. So I'm going to go ahead and open that up. Just a second. So if you look in this particular database, you'll see that I've got my secondary NDF file, and then I've got my uh, the primary MDF file for my uh, database, right? You can see that that's the partition samples here. In fact, uh, probably better idea would be for me to uh, split this by the date modified. So you can see that I've got my LDF, my MDF, and my secondary NDF. And at the moment, you'll see that uh, the data is being inserted, so it's not reached the size where the auto growth needs to kick in. So we'll just leave the script running for a few uh, minutes, and when the volume of data increases significantly, we should be able to see that uh, whichever is the last partition, so uh, let me just have a look at this and see which was the last partition that uh, I had implemented. So as you can see here, I've got the script open and uh, the last file group that I'm working with is a secondary file group that we have here. So uh, ideally with a lot of data coming in and this being an identity column, you'll see that a lot of the data is now being flooded or pushed into the secondary file group which just has the secondary .ndf file there. And if you look at the data, you'll see that uh, as if you look at the underlying file group, you'll see that the size of the secondary file group is now slowly increasing as more data gets pushed in. So again, this size is not showing you the actual amount of rows getting in, but more about uh, the auto growth settings kicking in. 
So you'll see that I've got my partition MDF and I've got the secondary. You can see that uh, it just changed from uh, 4000 kilobytes to um, you can see it's uh, increasing here. So essentially what's happening with partitioning is that because of the way that the partition function is defined, all the data gets focused on just a single secondary data file. Now this is different compared to say uh, the other approach that we have here. So if I just create a new database, right, and I say uh, create database example, And in the example database, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create a normal file and file group and insert some data into uh, uh, the underlying table without really implementing any form of partitioning at the moment. So I'll just click uh, properties. Yeah. And I've got my properties here. File group, I'm going to click add file group and I'm going to call it secondary and it's not a read-only file group but it is going to be the default file group and then under files I'm gonna add a file and I'm gonna just call it secondary NDF it's gonna belong to the secondary data file and I'm then gonna call it uh, third file in the secondary so we've got basically two files inside the secondary uh, file group we'll just leave uh, all the settings with the default uh, file and file group settings now I'm gonna insert or create a table first inside this database called uh, use example um, sys dot uh, dm underscore s underscore performance counters So I've created a table called my data, which is going to contain uh, data from the performance counters. Yeah, and then I'm just going to go ahead and insert into my data. Select star from my data. So I'm just reinserting the same rows back into the table, so that I get something very similar to like a exponential series there. Yeah, and I'm gonna iterate this a hundred times. A hundred times is uh, going to be pretty huge but uh, nonetheless we'll stop it somewhere in the middle. So now that I've done that if you look uh, my files show up here so you'll see that uh, I've got the new files that I've just created which is uh, example LDF file I've got a secondary NDF file that belongs to uh, the file group so you can see that uh, my tempdb is going up right now followed by my third file and my secondary NDF file. You see these two files here see how quickly they're ramping up but you'll notice that the rows are distributed almost evenly between the two different files unlike what we saw earlier with uh, partitioning where in partitioning we saw that the secondary NDF file that I have here which belonged to the partition database was the focus of a lot of the uh, the rows whereas here we see that there's an even distribution so ideally what I'm trying to show you here is that when you implement partitioning you're looking at a localized hotspot for data if you have a highly transactional database essentially because based on whatever partition function you're using there's a probability that all your data gets flooded into one NDF file so when you're working with partitioning what you will do ideally is do a combination of both of these scenarios where you have a file group and the file group has maybe five or six different files and those five or six different files in turn are then located on multiple different drives that way distributing the workload on maybe a D drive, an F drive, a G drive, so on and so forth basically to improve your latency or IO throughput yeah? and this is basically what I wanted to show you the difference between just implementing partitioning or just implementing multiple files and file groups versus maybe the advantages of having a combination always keep in mind the intention is to differentiate or spread the IO across multiple hard disks while at the same time identifying that all the archive data or all the historical data is located in one place so that in case you need to improve your SLA or in case you need to restore the database quickly you have that ability because all your archive data is located in one place well, that's pretty much it for this video. I uh, hope I've been able to clarify the difference between just partitioning versus partitioning with file groups and the advantages of the combination.
and uh, more importantly the advantage in terms of performance in terms of data manageability as well as in terms of the uh, disaster recovery in the next video uh, which will be the last video in the series we will actually go ahead and implement a rolling window function and show you how to move archive data from the current partition into a historical or archive table and that will actually help you uh, maintain or flush out data quickly from the database when you need to that's pretty much it for this video I hope you've enjoyed it uh, please feel free to visit the blog it's on uh, www.enabledbusiness.com and uh, if you have any questions you can always ping me on uh, uh, the website and I'll be more than happy to get back in touch with you thank you and uh, see you in the next video